In this lesson, we're going to talk about the zeros of a function. Let's begin by looking at a graph. Here we have a graph of a function. Take a look along the x-axis. Notice that this function intersects the x-axis in two places. Let's draw points at those two locations. Those two points are known as the zeros of the function. Why are they called the zeros, you might ask? Well, let's take a look. Consider the coordinates of each point. The first point is negative 3, 0. That tells us that we have an input of negative 3 and an output of 0. Consider the second point, 1, 0. That tells us we have an input of 1 and an output of 0. The zeros of a function are where the output is 0, and they're always located on the x-axis. Let's make note of a few important things that you want to know about zeros. The first thing, the zeros of a function are where the output is equal to zero. The second thing, on a graph, the zeros are located where the function passes through the x-axis. These points are also called the x-intercepts. They're called the x-intercepts because this is where the graph passes through the x-axis. Now I'd like to make an important note. Some people refer to the zeros of a function as roots. While this is common, it is technically incorrect. A function has zeros. An equation has roots. When you solve an equation, you find the solutions. In another word for solutions are roots. But when we have a function, we're not solving for anything. So when we're talking about the x-intercepts on a function, what we're really talking about are the zeros. Just be aware that at some point in your life, you might hear someone refer to them as roots, and while they're technically incorrect to say that, you know what they mean. Let's take a look at some examples. State the coordinates of the zeros. We're given the graph of a function, and we want to state the coordinates or the locations of the zeros. We begin by looking along the x-axis and find where the graph intersects, at these two points right here. What are the coordinates of those points? Well, let's take a look. The first point is 1, 0. That's the first zero. The second point is 4, 0. That is the second zero. The points 1, 0 and 4, 0 are the zeros of the function. They're the zeros because that is where the output of the function is zero. Let's try another example. Can you state the coordinates of the zeros for this function? Pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check your answer. Let's compare answers. We look along the x-axis. We see that this function has two points of intersection. Those are the zeros. What are the coordinates of those zeros? Those coordinates are negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. Those points are the coordinates of the zeros of the function. Let's try another exercise. Here we have an interesting function. Can you state the coordinates of the zeros for this function? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check. Let's see how you did. We look along the x-axis. We see that there are three zeros for this function. Let's write down the coordinates of those points. The zeros are at the following points. Negative 4, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 0. These are the coordinates of the zeros. Let's try one more exercise. Here's the graph of a function. Can you state the coordinates of the zeros? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check. Let's compare answers. We look along the x-axis. We see two points of intersection. The coordinates of those points are 0, 0 and 5, 0. 0, 0 and 5, 0 are the coordinates for the zeros of the function. The input 0 produces the output of 0, and the input 5 produces the output of 0. Let's try one more. Here's the graph of a function. Can you identify the coordinates of the zeros? Please pause the video here. Let's compare answers. We look along the x-axis. We notice that there are no points of intersection. That means there are no values where the function outputs a zero. 
Therefore, this function has no zeros. Sometimes we're given a table of values, an input and an output table. When you have this, remember that the input is the x and the output is the y. The zeros of a function are always when the output is zero. So if we look in this input and output table, we can look to see where the output is zero. We see that happens right here and down here. Let's take a look at those two values. We have the input negative 4 and the output 0. Down below, we have the input 2 and the output 0. Those are the zeros of the function, negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. So, in order to find the coordinates of the zeros if you're given an input and output table, simply look at the outputs and find where the output, or the y value, is 0. Here's one last exercise for you to try today. Here we have an input and an output table. See if you can identify the coordinates of the zeros. Please pause the video here. Let's compare answers. We look in the output column and we look for the output of zero. That happens in only one place for this function, right here. The input is one and the output is zero. That means we have a zero at the point one, zero. That is the zero of the function. So now you know all about zeros of functions, how to identify them on graphs, and how to identify them from tables of values. Remember, you can learn more about the features of functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.